Joining us now is Chuck Haskins from VFW Post 334. And uh, you guys are doing all kinds of good things in the community. Absolutely. Um, just recently, uh, I got an email from you uh, saying, are you going to come out and cover our check presentation? And I said, wait a second. We did a check presentation back in February, and you said this is a different check presentation. So from what I understand, uh, the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry reached out to you once again. Can you share that story? Well, they have a situation going on right now that the demand on their organization is so great that they did additional resources to come in there. So they wanted to know if we could sponsor another shelf. Mm -hmm. So we approached our post and decided we had enough funds out there to go out and do that again. And uh, so that's why we invited you out. And we wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of what's going on at Fish because they feed in so many people. Yeah. They're, they're talking about going to a second shift because the amount of people going through there has greatly increased. The federal government started during the COVID years to start all these federal food programs. As of May 1st, or April 1st, I think it was April 1st, all that went away. Yeah. So the, the public that uh, was being supported by that now is, does not have no support. Hmm. And now they're coming to fish. And, and that's uh, cleaning the shelves off. I mean, clean, even right. though they do have a surplus in their back room there, uh, they're going through it pretty Very, very, very fast. Yeah. So the check that you presented as part of the Adopt a Shelf program, uh, the VFW has already yeah. adopted the pasta shelf. Now it's the Campbell's uh, Chunky, Chunky soup. soup. And from what they say, that's the one of their most popular ones used. So they want to make sure they keep that full because one can of that with some rice become a whole meal for the family. Yeah. So we decided, great idea, and we did do that. So if anybody else out there would like to join, that's $1,200 a year, or if you want to go in there by month, you can actually go out and maintain a shelf. A lot yeah. of people do that. But they need help, and uh, they got a big event coming up here, which gives uh, a lot of volunteer work uh, availability on, uh, on May 13th, I believe. This uh, Saturday? This, this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody in the uh, Oxford Orient area should have gotten the mail this uh, yesterday, I believe, a little postcard from the post office saying they're just starting their food drive. Mm -hmm. Their national program is called St Stamp Out Hunger. St Stamp, Stamp Out Hunger. Mm -hmm. And uh, nationally, this is, goes on. But for our little world, part of the world, we have the local guys, they got a little plastic bag they put with their postcard, put it out there, and this Saturday, the post office will come pick it up. Well, they pick it up, they take it over to fish to drop it off. We need volunteers out there to help pick up that food and bring it back and put it on the shelves. So Yeah, it's a great it's program. They weren't able to do it uh, several years in a row because of COVID, so you can imagine the impact that that had on the, the fish food pantry. It came yeah. back last year, and it's returning this year. Uh, so basically, just fill up a you know, little grocery bag uh, with canned items, make sure they're not expired or anything like that. Yeah. Leave them by your, uh, your mailbox. Put them out maybe Friday night, because as they go out to, to deliver mail and collect mail, uh, if they see a bag by your mailbox on Saturday, they'll collect right. it, right. take it back to the post office, where representatives of fish will show up with pickup trucks, and collect uh, all the oh, stuff that comes into the post office yeah. and get it to the food pantry. So hopefully this drought that the food pantry is going through right now will be taken care of at right. least for uh, another several months because of this. They bring in a lot of food right. during this stamp well, on This is the drought. biggest event they have during the year. Yeah. And uh, we just went through our biggest event of the year of doing the Buddy Poppies this past two weekends. Yeah, how'd that which, go? Which you know, came out pretty good. The weather didn't cooperate with us mm. too well. It would, uh, had a couple of rain out days that hurt us when, when we were outside. But uh, for the guys that are indoors, yeah, we did pretty good. Yeah. And uh, through all these donations from the community is how we can do out, donate the money to fish and the other activities we do around the town. So we want to thank the community for supporting us the last two weekends. And uh, but uh, continue going with what, what we're doing. Yeah. So we uh, really look forward to doing all the programs we do in the Oxford Orient area. And um, we get to be uh, community lives at Sam's Club for both weekends. And so we see you around everywhere. Yeah, that's what we're out here for, <laughs> to see us, because uh, we appreciate 
what they do for us, but we want to make sure. Uh, what the biggest one I can know we did for Lake Orion was that baseball park that we created here, oh, Freedom yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Miracle we, Field. Yeah, yeah, the Miracle Field. That was fantastic. And yeah. uh, but in the, during the school years, beginning of the school years, you know, we give them the money for the bags for the kids, buy coats for the kids, boots for the kids, and uh, do whatever we can to keep the community best as we can here in Oxford and Lake Orion. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, as as an outsider to Lake Orion, you know, just getting used to it, it, it seems like it's really good what you guys are doing, you know, um, getting used to it, getting used to the community, seeing stuff around happening, mm. you know, with the video camera, just my eyes, really. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's nice to see. Well, thank you. Yeah. But uh, we couldn't do any of this without the support of the community. So. Well, speaking of support from the community, if you want to express your gratitude, not only to our living veterans, but those who have fought and died for our country, uh, our Orion Veterans Memorial is going to be bustling in a couple of weeks for mm -hmm. Memorial Day. Uh, things kick off that morning with Orion Township's uh, Orion Veterans Memorial 5K run that kicks off near Children's Park over where the Orion Arts Center is. Yep. And uh, that's a fundraiser that helps maintain the Orion Veterans Memorial and uh, the upkeep. Yep. Bob Watchos does a great job Absolutely. maintaining that park over there. And then there are a number of uh, ceremonies that are going to be taking place that morning. You want to talk about some of the different activities that are going to be happening that morning? Right. The uh, you know first is going to be the kickoff, which is going to be the 5K run or walk, mm -hmm. and the five mile run for those that uh, 5K is not long enough for them. Yeah, there's two starts, yeah. and I remember the first right. time I was confused by that. They had one start and I got it, and then they lined up for another start. I'm like, what's yep. going on here? Yep. So it's a five mile run, run. walk and a 5K K run. run. Were you running, running Joe? Different paths. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Just running around with that camera in my hand keeps yeah. me uh, well, I'm, a wa I'm a watcher too, so. <laughs> yeah. But we, what we do do, we do hand out flags to all the kids that are going out for that day, so about 200 flags we give out now. And everyone who right. takes part in the, in the run will get a, a nice little commemorative medal at the end of the run. And you can see it's it's good for people of all ages. You've got kids and adults and everything in between. Uh, sometimes there, there's a few uh, veterans in there who uh, run with backpacks, backpacks. on and yep. stuff like that. So uh, it's, it's pretty great. It's a really great event. Our younger generation veterans will do that, yes. Mm -hmm. You won't see too many older ones. And then in addition mm -hmm. to the 5K, um, there's a number of ceremonies that are going on. Unfortunately, right at the exact same time of the 5K, uh, there's a ceremony going on over at East Lawn, I believe it is. Is that the, is that the cemetery that's on Orion Road? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a little ceremony there. There's a, there's a monument there. I think a World War II Two. monument yeah. is over at East Lawn on Orion Road. Uh, then at the completion of the 5K run, there's uh, a little ceremony that they right. have in Children's Park where they drop the wreath into the water to uh, honor those sure. lost at sea. Usually that's right around 10 o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning that they do that. And uh, then that kind of concludes all the activities we're doing there. Then mm -hmm. we move over then to the, the Orion Veterans Memorial where we have Well, before program. that, before yeah. we get to the memorial, there's the parade. Oh, that's so, right, that's right, the parade. Uh, after the ceremony, yep. you'll get a little yep. bit of a break. Uh, but then you head over to uh, Flint and Broadway, and like most parades that go through the village, they'll kick off, I believe, at Blansom's Elementary School. Blansom. Uh, they work their way down uh, Flint Street, and it's usually led by the uh, police department's vintage 1940 Ford. And um, it's, uh, it's a fun little parade. They usually uh, will stop at the intersection and recognize the uh, honored veteran Mm -hmm. uh, every year they pick an honored uh, veteran to be recognized. This is last year's parade. Um, and so that's really nice. There you see Chief Rossman uh, recognizing right. the honored veteran. And uh, so that's part of the uh, events that are going on that day. Uh, of course, the uh, high school marching band takes part in it. There's some military vehicles and things like that. So, right. um, so like I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, that'll be going on uh, in downtown Lake Orion. And then it culminates with the big ceremony so, at the memorial. Right, and uh, 
This is what the uh, parade concludes uh, right around 12, 12.30, and then we come on over to the, the memorial. The program there starts about 1 o'clock. Um, you're going to see our auxiliary from our VFW. They'll be out there doing their buddy poppies. And uh, but the overall program will kick off with uh, Captain uh, Mass Mateo from the U.S. Army in Korea War. He'll kick it off. And after the captain, we turn around VFW Post 334. We'll march in and post the all the colors of the military flags. So we do that. And once we get the flags posted, we'll turn around and have Joanne uh, give us Pledge of Allegiance. Leads the whole group and do that. And so we do a nice one. And after we do that, we have them come up and post the reefs out there. And uh, I do want to see uh, if we have a number of speakers. In fact, one on the screen right now was the uh, main speaker this, this year, uh, Cynthia Wright. She is a lieutenant colonel from the U.S. Air Force, served diff two different presidents. She served on their staff mm -hmm. and uh, has a wonderful career. And she'll be giving the, the main address up there for what Memorial Day is about. Yeah. And uh, so many people do not know what Memorial Day is about. Yeah, it's more than, thing. you know, boating and, and picnics right. and barbecues. It's uh, having the day off of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in that clip that you just saw, they, they read off the names of Lake Orion natives who lost their lives right. uh, at war. So uh, yeah, the, the remember them. Yeah, in the center mm -hmm. part of the Orion Memorial, um, you got a, a statue of a family uh, hugging together. The names of all the fallen from Lake Orion or around that, and they'll have different people stand up there at the stage and read off each one of those names, because we never forget those who have gone before us. Mm -hmm. So and that's what Memorial Day is about, remember those who died in the line of battle in wars for we can enjoy the freedoms today, and uh, so we, we recognize those. And it's not trying to remember veterans that are t overall are still alive today, that's Veterans Day in November. Exactly. Uh, what Memorial Day is dedicated is to remember that you're fallen, and uh, we do that as best as we can. So yeah. we can remember all that. So after we read all the names and we go through that, um, Chris Barnett will be making a uh, little speech. What makes America great? And uh, then we'll go out and uh, actually conclude the program. It's about 45 minutes long. But uh, overall, it's uh, very, very well attended by everyone. Yeah. Uh, usually we have standing room only. Um, one caveat is hopefully we have nice weather. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have some years that pouring down rain, <laughs> and we have other years with blazing hot sun, and uh, where we actually had a couple of people pass out because it gets so warm because the whole memorial is laid out in bricks of mm -hmm. fallen people of, of different families, either veterans or uh, um, family of veterans, and go with that. But the, uh, you had mentioned that we've got a new, that was, you mentioned the uh, Victory Garden earlier, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a brand new one this year. It's the first one of this, because our old one been there about 10 years or so. And it was made of wood, and I heard it, it was, was It was rotting out, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. rotting out. And it was very tight over there when we put it in. So that's totally went to taken out and a brand new brick victory gardens put in. And also and behind the uh, sign for the memorial, we got some artists came in and did some nice paintings on the back of that. Yeah, and, uh, and they added a few new things recently. The flagpoles are new if you get down there and check right. those out. There's some beautiful signage that honor Rosie the Riveter, Rosie the Riveter women who a uh, woman who served in, yeah. the, in, the, in the service. So they're yeah. both right next to the Victory Garden, and yeah. really uh, complement the whole Orion Veterans Memorial. Yeah, because we got so many uh, um, kudos for the dog memorial we put in there a couple years oh, ago. Oh yeah, that was great. And we we got people from all over the state of Michigan come out and see the dog memorial, <laughs> but they miss some of the stuff we have on the other side of the. Uh, the Orient Memorial with the Victory Garden and the other memorials they get there because we have yeah. a lot of our, our veterans uh, got their special places there too. Yeah, 
You know, I, I came out to this community, uh, actually this year is my 30th year that I've been here in the Lake Warren community. Congratulations. And yeah. early on, within the first year or so, is when they broke ground oh, yep. on the Veterans Memorial. Yep. And so over the last 30 years, I've watched them build that memorial piece by piece. That wasn't all put in in one, one moment. No. It has been assembled piece by piece with the statue and the monuments and everything getting uh, added over time and uh, the latest additions are the flagpoles and the, and the raised flower bed and that sort of stuff. So uh, if you haven't been down there, uh, get down there over Memorial Day weekend, check it out. There's a ceremony going on and occasionally throughout the year, like in the summertime, they'll have coffee with a veteran. You can go down and, and meet some of your veterans and, and uh, honor them and thank them for their service to this country. And yeah. thank you for being here and thank, thank, you, thank sir. you for your service thank and you everything that you, you do here in the community. Appreciate that. And I'm glad we can help you get the word out and uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, following your your uh, your efforts uh, we, here in this We community. hope to see you down here on May 20th. I will yeah. be down there. Yeah, I never Monday, yeah. Monday uh, May 29th.